Hi, so this is going to be a pretty quick, simple tutorial on how to use Hamua to import levels from the source engine into UE4. It's not about exporting your materials from your UE4 project to Hammer, but I will do a video like that. So the example we're using here is that I'm going to create a level using Half-Life 2 textures, and then I'm going to import that, including its textures, into UE4. So I guess the first thing to explain is that your mileage may vary with getting Hammer to open in the first place. Usually, going through the Source SDK launcher as used to be the norm does not work anymore. Hammer will open wrong and not function properly, so don't use this hideous ancient interface. Instead, you want to just go into your Half-Life 2 folder or CSGO, whatever. Any source engine game via Valve is probably pretty much going to work for this. Browse local files, and there'll be a bin folder in there. And within that, you want to find hammer.exe and run that directly, which is what I've already done. And I've gone in and created a map, just as an example. It includes just some solids and a nice little arch that's reasonably well UV'd. And this took me like less than five minutes, which would have taken a long time on UE4 if you're including the arch. Anyway, things to note in this map are that the yellow here is no draw. This is used in Source Engine games to just not do particular phases or make them invisible, but Hamiwa uses it to selectively cull polygons. So, for instance, if you have, for instance, the underside of this pillar won't exist on the mesh in UE4 because it's no draw. And if you're on a reasonably recent version of Hammer, there's a no draw button up here that will show you what it looks like without the no draw faces in it. Other thing to note is that things are grouped in this map. So Control G in Hammer groups, Control U ungroups, and everything that is grouped together is going to import as a single mesh into Unreal. So everything that's red selected right now is one mesh. This arch is one mesh, even though ungrouped, it's a bunch of different solids. And this ground is not grouped into anything, so that's just going to be one mesh. So I could just import this into UE4 right now, but it wouldn't have any textures because obviously Half-Life 2's textures are not in Unreal. Got some nodal faces here I'm just going to fix real quick. How quick was that? Anyhow, so... Unfortunately, Half-Life 2's textures aren't just in a folder. We have to extract them out of a GCF file. So you need this program, GCFscape. If you're going from a source mod or something, they will just be in a folder, in the materials folder under your mod. But yeah, if you just Google GCFscape, it's on a site called NEMS Tools, and you just want to use that to go into your Steam folder, Steam apps, common, and find the GCF file that you need. The one that has most of these is source materials, but there's some episode two specific materials and a different GCF. I'm sure you can figure it out. So under the root, you've got HL2 here and then materials. And we're just gonna right click on materials and go to extract and then choose where to extract them to. I'm not gonna do that because I already did that because otherwise this video would be really, really long. So that'll give you a bunch of VTF and VMT files in a folder somewhere. Um, VTF, this is fairly academic, but in Source Engine, VTF is the actual image file, like these bricks, whatever, and the VMT describes to the engine how to use that, what normal map to use, all that sort of stuff. It's the shader, basically. Basically. Anyway, back in Unreal, and I'm just in the third-person blueprint template, um, I've created a base material material, and this is important because a lot of folks, I guess, don't realize that Material instancing is a thing, but it's really important for performance and just keeping a project wranglable. You could just import every texture from Half-Life 2 and have it and have them all have their, their own materials, but that's a terrible idea. So you create a base material using material parameters, and I'm sure you can find a different tutorial on this that goes into more depth. But basically, when you have a texture sample, you can right-click on it, convert to parameter, 
give it a name, doot. And then as long as that's hooked up, an instance, which you can create by going right clicking and create material instance, will have control over those parameters. So you can set up a really elaborate material with, I don't know, parallax occlusion mapping and everything. And then for every different type of surface that you want to have those effects, they just extend that material and say, oh yeah, it's that, but with a different texture. And you can have bools and all that sort of thing. So the reason that I explained that is just that Hamua creates material instances, not materials, if you provide a source material, which is what you should do. And that's all very efficient. So in the Textua tab of Hamua, select your source material that I just talked about and the parameter to use and type in the name of the folder to import to if you have any kind of preference. You choose the source directory where your VMTs and VTF files are. And then you click import and it'll take a while to import. Again, I've already done that. So now that I've done that, because that seriously took like 20 minutes, I've got all of these Half-Life 2 textures in my game and they're all material instances. So what's an interesting folder to look at? Half-Life, <laughs> those, those are the few Half-Life 1 textures that Half-Life 2 uses. What have we got? Surely there's some concrete in here, brick. All right, so now you can see that we've got material instances that are straight out of Half-Life 2. So one disadvantage of you are right now is it doesn't have the functionality to automatically assign the correct normal maps to these materials as they are in Half-Life 2. But you can easily set that up in your material instance per texture. It's just a little bit more grunt work and that feature I'm quite sure will soon be implemented. So the other thing that it did while it imported all those textures was it added them all to a list of text of material substitutions, basically, so that when Hamua opens a map and it sees the hammer's reference as seen here to concrete, concrete floor, blah, 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 it knows what material instance to use instead. So when we hit Hamua, we go choose file to open our VMF. I forget where I put my VMF, one second. I'll just, it's on the desktop, it's called Gemap, cool. Okay, choose file, Gemap. Presumably yours is not called Gemap, I'm flattered if it is. We go open. It's reloading the material, master material list from a config file. Ah, oh, we've actually run into a bug here, but I'm actually pretty sure that I just screwed up at some point because this is my third time recording this tutorial but it actually gives us a pretty good opportunity to go over some of the functionality in this menu. For instance, the ND column here. So I was talking about the no draw functionality earlier where anything that you texture with the no draw texture in Hammer is automatically not imported as a face. And that also applies to any texture that you check ND on here. So for instance, if you were importing a Half-Life 2 or Half-Life 1 map and you didn't want the skybox brushes in as is almost certainly the case, you would no draw that and you wouldn't get those brushes in the import. And if you do get materials coming up as none, you can search for a material to use. And in my case, because I screwed up in some way because I'm not paying attention, they're all the same names there. Speaking of which, if this ever happens to you, you can probably just resolve it by going to the Texture tab and going Discover Materials in Project. Maybe take Rebuild Entire Master Material List. It'll just find all those materials. I already know, because I worked alone in Half-Life 2, that the resolutions of these textures are in fact 512 by 512, which is the default. But if yours aren't, it is actually important that these numbers be correct. So if you had like a 256 by 512, texture and you imported with 512 by 512, your UVs would be wrong. Anyway, let's hit go and see what happens. That was quick. Let's get rid of this block that came into the format. Okay. So we've got 
our walls, but for some reason we don't have our floor. And yet here it is. This might be a bug again. Right. I'm just going to try and import it again. I think the issue there was that the floor was not part of a group. There seems to be an issue in this latest version of Hamua where it won't import things that are not grouped. Easy fix, just group everything. Well, there we go. So yeah, that's our Half-Life 2 map. I'm going to just pretty up a bit. So ideally that would have gone off as a tutorial without a hitch, but there were maybe two hitches. Not a big deal. This is the very first version of this tool and Tufter is really good at support. So uh, if you run across anything like this, show up in the Unreal Engine forum thread and we will talk you through them. Hopefully this has been all right. I haven't done a verbal tutorial before, but hopefully it does the job. Um, let me know what you think and hope you dig Hamula. Laters.